So hello again. It's time for the Athletic Mind Unleashed and we will be talking about sport, being an athlete, maybe also coaching athletes and with me we have Luciana who turned out to have been an Olympic athlete. Can you tell me more about your Olympian journey? <laughs> uh, hi Celia, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I've been playing sport my whole life and uh, I managed to, to get to the Olympiade, wow. which, which are the, the Olympics for students under 28 in 2013. Um, mm. Giving away my age here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I, I practice, I play quite a, a few sports, uh, mm. always team sports. Mm. Um, I went to the Olympiade with volleyball. Mm -hmm. And after that, I went into corporate. But after that, uh, I decided to pursue beach volleyball. Oh! And I, I also uh, managed to get into the Grand Slams. So I also did the World Tour. It was quite fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still playing, still training, just not on tour anymore. Mm -hmm. But still so, how did you get into it? Like anyway, you said you have been doing sport like your whole life, so it yes. was like a natural direction for you? I would say so. I think I have uh, a lot of energy <laughs> and, and uh, I needed to, to release it, to use it, make use of it. Uh, so I've always been an active person and I think it started from there and also very social. I always wanted to do something and I started playing tennis. Uh, I was born in Argentina so uh, I used to play handball there, basketball, um, did swimming. So Argentina, <laughs> yeah. it's like a place for ball games, I can see. <laughs> yes, at least for me. Well, yes, you have uh, football or soccer, mm. uh, rugby, oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Yes. Messi, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> big names, big names. So, yes. did you already knew as a child? Okay, one day I want to do big in sports. I had that dream. I, I did have that dream. I, I, actually, in fact, um, I wanted to to get uh, to go to Rio 2016 to the Olympics, uh, to the Senior Olympics um, with beach volleyball. I did play in the Grand Lams, but I didn't uh, qualify for that. I went to watch and I was so happy about it. Yes, uh, I'm really happy with the, with, the journey, with the journey. So you have actually seen the Olympic Games? Yes, so I experienced those. Oh yeah, and you're like, oh, yes! Yeah, yeah. So I imagine it, it was amazing. It was amazing and actually, I, I, I think I watched the most events ever <laughs> because we were running uh, from one event to the other one. The beach volleyball events, I watched most of them. They went up to midnight. Um, yeah, starting early in the morning, 6 a.m. Actually, we would start 6 a.m., train, then go to the athletics, then come back to the beach to reach the, the volleyball, and in between the rest. Uh, yeah, it it sounds like a true athlete, even if you're like traveling and participating in an event, you're still training yourself as well. Yes, of course. Like, yes, of course. Yeah, I know. Of course. <laughs> I know. I know what you're talking about because I'm the same. It's like okay, we are here like in Mind Valley University right now. For me, okay, it's easy. I'm at home, but I'm still like even when there's like this very intense event going on for three weeks until okay I'm still doing my training I'm actually like doing more than usual because you know it, it's kind of grounding I would say how about you are you training during this yes I am I, um, yes. I keep I keep my routines as close as possible mm -hmm. of course uh, we adapt but um, the morning routines breathing meditation um, then movement and movement can change, can be um, a long walk, a hike, um, or Qigong, that's what I love doing. And then of course I do my 10x sessions, uh, which is strength training, um, yes, uh, and then walk again in the evening, mm -hmm. especially here we are in Estonia, uh, it's beautiful, a beautiful city. Yeah, yeah, it's a very walkable place actually. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so definitely, yes, staying, yeah. uh, you know, it's about, it's also, um, health and wellness, it's, it's needed. <laughs> the yeah, I think it's like, uh, especially when it's like busy times, this is the time where the routine is most needed. I think many people, they are like, uh, they get into the mindset, okay, now I'm busy, I can't eat healthy, I can't train, I can't walk, but actually this is the time where, when you sort of like do it the most, because this keeps you like grounded, and this keeps you like coming back to your center, and it's like, you know, you don't let yourself go, you just 
quiet with this new routine and you still find ways to be active actually yeah. and this is actually what you're doing so I'm like, yes <laughs> that's my goal <laughs> yes exactly and uh, you also said that right now like your routine also has like uh, breathing and meditation but when you were like doing like this very competitive high level sport did you also like know something about you know this mental stuff like meditation and breathing and all these things I learned I learned mm. I had to learn very quickly <laughs> uh, you know at the end of the day if, if I look at the top 20 top 20 teams in beach mm. for example physically um, you know even skills technically they are all quite similar very very fit but what makes a difference on who will win or lose that game it's the mindset so yeah it's very important um, I learned I I wasn't like this my whole life I was still training and playing but didn't know all these tools or maybe I knew them but I didn't apply them uh, consistently but for the last few years uh, I've, I I created my habits and my routines and I use them whether I'm competing or not competing uh, they become a lifestyle that's the thing they become a lifestyle and depending uh, you know you have periodization so before competition, you train in a certain way. In off season, maybe you work on, on you know, weaknesses or, or and strength. You do different type of, of training, uh, also mental training. Um, so yeah, we learn. So oh, you said that uh, you do like uh, also like the mental training. So I think for the physical stuff, we have it scheduled into our week. We have all the training plans, and you know all the, that structure. But do you also have it like for the mental training? How do you put it into your day? Uh, yes, um, we do. We do train differently, as you just mm -hmm. said. Physically, we have the periodization. Uh, you will do um, off season. You will do more, uh, more strength training in a different way to get to build up for the season. The season you have to be more agile. Obviously, it depends on your sport. Uh, but with mental training as well, because you have to prepare uh, for a certain competition for a certain time of of the year, uh, a season, mm -hmm. and, and you know, we evolve and we want to, to deal uh, mentally with whatever is top priority uh, for each player. Um, so yes, we, we plan it uh, and we have a sports psychologist and we, we tackle whatever it needs to be tackled at that point in time. Is it uh, like on the team level or do you also have like individual sessions? Both. Both, okay. Both, yeah. So it's like part of your everyday, actually. Yes, but then, then as, I, as I was saying, um, you know, this becomes wellness becomes a, a lifestyle. Whether you're competing or not competing, uh, it's part of, of who, who I am now. So I do meditations every day, and, and I I just change change the type of meditations according to the needs. Oh yeah, it's like uh, I think the most important thing is to be you know, be like able to adjust. Mm -hmm. Because it's like they say also like in meditation, it's not about staying in this moment and you know, not thinking about anything, it's about coming back. When your mind wanders, you come back. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that we have to learn. And I think it's the same with any kind of training and any kind of lifestyle habits. So yeah, you're still training, you're still active and it's very cool. It's like <laughs> I think you're like me, it's like it's so big part of your identity. You don't even have yeah. to think I want to, how do I go and you don't need to find the motivation, it's just, just go, right? Yes, yes, there's this drive inside me um, and if it's not this type of movement, it's the other movement. Look, life is movement, mm. no movement, no life, so yeah. <laughs> you get stuck. Yeah, yeah. And where are you located like right now, like you're based in uh, South Africa? I yes, guess. I live in Cape Town, South Africa right now. So how is it? training like around there. I, I have heard stories about South Africa that it's maybe not the, the best idea to go to all kinds of places and the all streets and like how do you feel like moving around outdoors for example? Yes. Um, look, I believe that anywhere in the world you, you just need to know where to go mm -hmm. to feel safe and different areas are different, different neighborhoods but uh, I feel very safe and look after myself. Um, I go and I, we train at, at the beach and we walk uh, during the day and as I said in certain areas, so I feel great, Cape Town is an amazing city, uh, we have the sea and the mountain right 
And I'm oh, like, you have everything. We got everything. We got everything. Yeah, wow. very blessed, very blessed. So yeah. very happy. Yeah. And how is like the I don't know the training culture in South Africa in general? Do people like to work out and okay. train? Well, uh, I was speaking about Cape Town. Cape Town mm -hmm. is a very health conscious city, um, and I was very surprised about this because. Wherever you go, um, you have a choice to, to get some like freshly squeezed juice, your green smoothie, um, your healthy option. If you're vegan, vegan, uh, you have really a lot of options. It's very easy to, to stay healthy in that sense. And you have a lot of organic, like really pure food, <laughs> uh, which is great. So yeah, I would say um, the, the lifestyle and the mentality there is a little bit different from, for example, Johannesburg or Pretoria. If I compare it to, because I also lived in, in Pretoria and worked mm. in Johannesburg before. So actually this uh, location where you are, it's supporting your lifestyle? I believe so, I wow. believe so, yes, yes. That's so good. And the weather too. <laughs> ah, it's yes. warm all the time? Mm, most of the time, yes, mm. most of the time, I would say. We've got also strong winds and a little bit of rain here and there, but yeah. Okay, to get some kind of idea, like okay, what the food is, food is like, like in South Africa. What's like a usual day of eating? What kind of products and food you choose? Like, what's available there? I don't, can't even imagine if it's like different or not. Well, honestly, you can get anything you want, mm. like from around the world, and very good quality food. Um, I think um, Cape Town has one or two restaurants at least that you can go every a different restaurant every single day of the, of the year mm. because it, there's so many there's so much variety and um, more the typical food in South Africa meat brine is quite mm. a big thing and uh, I love eating meat as well and um, from Argentina, Argentina yes. yes exactly <laughs> the, the most famous uh, meat restaurants in Estonia they're called Argentina so still yeah. need to go and check it out but yes yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really would say there's a lot of variety. There's something for uh, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're also now all, uh, guiding other people on the like, journey to health mm -hmm. and fitness. How did you get into this? Um, actually, I always remember a conversation that I had with one friend. We were sitting at the balcony in Barcelona and we were talking and, and she said, you got to be a coach. I was like, ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm a coach, I'm a wellness coach, a holistic coach, because um, I believe that health is, is our greatest wealth and it's the foundation for whatever we want to do, whether we want to be business leaders, we want to have great relationships, we want to be nomads and travel the world. Um, we need help to be able yeah. to do all these things, yeah. right? Uh, play sports, you know? So, uh, yeah, I really enjoy um, sharing the, the knowledge that I gain and sharing the tools. Basically, that is what I like to do, share tools that I learn and then uh, if they serve you, take them. If they don't serve you, discard them, that's all good. But, but learn, be curious, um, apply them, look after yourself because if we all look after ourselves and do this, the maintenance, uh, and I'm talking daily ma maintenance, it's like we were speaking about the meditation yeah. or whatever you, or, or the training, no matter where you are, um, everyone will be able to be themselves and be able to you know, do what they want to do and live, live on purpose, that's what I normally say. So, so yeah, um, I, I love it and I think it was also in a way organic and natural. Mm -hmm. Now I'm also speaking, uh, thank you mm -hmm. for having me here. Um, I just gave a, a, a talk at my Bali University uh, yesterday. I totally enjoyed it, and it was about emotions, mm -hmm. how emotions may affect in the body, um, and then uh, teaching some tools to, to release the emotions, different things. And I've got mental tools, physical tools, uh, like journaling, like there are many ways of doing it. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I enjoy seeing the transformation mm -hmm. in people's life when, when they they start changing the habits because when we change the habits to, towards things that supports our body, supports our well-being and supports what, what we want to do in life, mm -hmm. then we, we are all more joyful and um, in general and yeah. yeah. The world is a better place actually yes. as a result <laughs> and it's like yes. I heard uh, a lot 
you were saying a lot of about you know teaching and sharing the tools. It's like you actually give people the methods mm -hmm. and the tools, and they are actually responsible for what they do with this. It's right. like you're not pushing anybody into transformation. If you want it, they just take it and do it. Correct. Yes, yes exactly. Mm -hmm. We we just share. We can inspire. Um, and yeah, you were saying uh, as a fitness, I'm, I'm also a fitness, uh, I would call myself a, a health coach, but we do focus on strength training because we know how important strength training and building muscle is for, for even for like diabetes, for this type of, uh, you know, um, a cardiovascular diseases, just to, to prevent these things. So it's more preventative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, I think you also said that you, you're not a big fan of gym. But uh, you you do you do know like how important it is yeah. to do like some strength training, and you're also teaching other people to do it. You know through the TENX program mostly that we both like studied and that we both like also teach. So, and I think it's like so TENX is only like ten minutes, right? Kind of. <laughs> Nine and so a half for me. <laughs> ah, yes. yes. So you can like uh, do this. Yes. This is like doable, and you have like six to the mind. Okay, I can do strength training even if I don't like the gym. I can still do it. So it's all in your head, you know. <laughs> well, um, you're, you're correct. I still I, I dislike going to the gym. I think it is because it's enclosed, it's inside. Take me outdoors, I'll, I'll be climbing mountains for two, three hours. Uh, but I learned and I understood um, how important it is to be, build muscle, uh, what having muscle does to you. And 10X is a, it's an amazing protocol that is very quick, so I can go in and out at the gym, do it, and leave. Uh, and it's very effective, as we both know. Um, so yes, uh, that's the reason why uh, I teach it. And I help people, uh, I take people through the 10X protocol. And what I like the most is that it's effective. And it's, mm. I love the Pareto rule. You know, we put in 20 and we get out 80, because that's what you get with, um, with 10X, literally. And that's the reason why I do it. And so have you also like seen like very like big transformations in your clients, for example? Big transformations. Like I just had one one client. She uh, in less than three months tripled her leg press, the, the weight. That's insane. That's insane. And someone that was already fit, uh, also former pro athlete. Mm. So it's but insane. maybe not like in the strength training area. She was like a pro in some different discipline. Yes, in a different discipline. Okay. okay. But but you know strength training. We can even think about it for like, we want to play with our grandchildren, we want to squat, uh, maybe pick up something from the shelf, something mm -hmm. heavy, a, a heavy luggage if we want to travel, or, or put something down that is heavy. They're like the global movements that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I think it's not just about, you know, okay, how I look or how I perform the leg press in the gym, and it's not about, the, you know, going all out in the gym, it's also like the bigger, wider goals and reasons and the wider motivation okay how do i want to be like i don't know in 20 years how do i want to like age because we are still aging it's like we can't stop this process so we still have to deal with it in, in some way or another so i think strength training it's it's very good it's like you keep your muscles strong you keep going and you are able to do anything you like hey. yes. And actually, if you also like see these big transformations, it also gives you like more power to continue, right? Hundred uh, percent. We feel different. We can act differently. We can actually do the things that we want to do. Mm. As you were saying, it's it's about why why are we training? Why do we want this muscle to to live our lives? To do the things that we want to do. And as you were saying, uh, the body, the shape. Yes, we also want the shape and the body. Yeah. And but that comes as a bad product. Mm. It's like a bonus. Yes, a yeah. really nice bonus. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe for me, like the body and the shape is like um, one of the main goals, even because my sport is begin fitness, so for this you actually need all this. But I think when I stop competing at one point, it will be more like other goals. And but what is like the big reason for you? Why are you doing all this strength training? I do it for uh, longevity, and when I say longevity, uh, I mean uh, health and wellness. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, uh, I understand now how important it is to have muscle mm -hmm. uh, and to keep it, and to you know, and 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 be in a state of, of health and flow within the body. That's the reason why. Yeah, I think. yeah. I think it's like uh, I love feeling and being strong. Yes. I love yes. being able to lift stuff. It's like 
not even uh, not just in the gym, but also like in real life. I can just lift something and, and it doesn't feel he heavy. Okay, may and I don't need any help. But yeah, as a woman, sometimes you just have to ask for help. And if men are offering, just okay, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> even if you can't actually do it yourself, you know. But it, that's a whole <laughs> another kind of topic. Eh? So, and I also wanted to come back to this athletic mindset for a little bit and ask you, okay, what it means for you to be an athlete? It's like, what kind of, uh, I don't know, personality traits, characteristics an athlete should have? Like, what's the personality of an athlete? Thank you for that question. Um, I can say for me, to say that I'm an athlete uh, for a long time has been my identity, which gave me an anchor and an identity, right? I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete. It also help me navigate through life, uh, especially when you don't know who you are, what are you doing, your purpose. Uh, like now I can say I'm an athlete, but I'm also a wellness coach, mm. uh, and I say it with with love, you know. Um, what drives an athlete and the mindset for me? I can share my. I think it, it might be different for different athletes, but for me, I'm a driven driven person, goal orientated, and I'm driven. I want this and I'm just gonna go for it, I'm focused. Um, so if you want to be an athlete, especially to compete uh, at a high level, there's certain characteristics that you need. You need, you need discipline. Um, if you have talent or no talent, you still need to do the work. Uh, I like to do smart work, a lot of smart work. <laughs> um, instead of saying hard work that we normally say, I, I, because I like this effectiveness as well, mm -hmm. like the Pareto rule, 20, 20, 80, it's like 10x. 10x is perfect for this because you, we don't, you know now that we don't need to be hours and hours at the gym to get a result. And rest is as important as training. Yeah. Maybe even most of it. So it's all about balance. If I had to say something, it's the, the focus, the drive, but also balance. Balance in the mental, uh, the physical, the spiritual, mm -hmm. and the emotional state. The emotional state mm -hmm. is very important. Um, so it's about dealing with all these aspects and and bringing tools that works for each individual, and then apply them. Implementation is is uh, paramount. Yeah, so it's not only theoretical, it's also no. like, you know, practical stuff. Yes. And uh, personalized tools for uh, every person, actually. It's, a, it's not that one tool fits everybody. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, you have to pick the tool that yeah. works for you, actually. Yes. Yes. And I love this point about efficiency and working smart. And also, you're, you also mentioned rest. And I think many athletes or many dreamer people me included, have trouble with you know getting dressed or like uh, allowing themselves to have a rest. So I think I didn't hear the last question. Uh, I think it's. I was just saying that uh, as an athlete and a driven person, it's sometimes very hard to give the permission to take a rest. A rest, yes, 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 because you want to train more and do more and. Yeah, I, I do believe in balance, so rest is as important as yeah. and nutrition as well, and, and training, training skills, training strength, mental strength, and mental training. Yeah, it's, it's the whole, the holistic point of view. Yeah, and with this, I think it's time for us to digress. But uh, before we finish, can you just uh, tell any listeners like, where to find you? If they like, uh, want to. I don't know, see your journey or work with you, or for example, like, where are you on the internet? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Celia. Uh, my name is Luciana Pierangeli, and you can find me uh, at lucianapierangeli.com. That's my website, and from there you can access all the social media links. I will be uh, super happy to, to hear you. If you have any question, I'm happy to share. I'm, I'm Instagram is Luciana Pirangeli 8, but I think you can get Amazon and YouTube. Uh, also, just my name and my surname. Uh, people can find it. And oh, you are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you, you can um, find me and ask me anything. I will be happy to connect. So, yeah, if you want to get into an Olympic athlete and a wellness coach, holistic coach, ta-da, here she is. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. I really appreciate it.